I welcome all of you to my channel. From this video, I am going to teach you frameworks. The question under frameworks lesson will be given under combined mathematics 2, question number 15. As a sub part of that question, you will be given a 90 mark problem out of 1000 marks which means out of 100 you can get 9 marks after this video okay let's start with a brief introduction on frameworks as you can see in this picture there is a frame with five rods sometimes these rods may be equal but in this particular question they are not equal so this is the framework given in 2018 past paper there are three steps that you must follow in order to complete your stress diagram which is the main thing that you need to obtain first one is to separate the framework into regions now I'm going to separate this given frame into its regions it is like this first you have to extend the given forces of the diagram here in this diagram there are three forces two unknown forces PQ and a weight W and also there are unknown forces in each and every rod they are called stresses which means they can be either tensions or thrusts so the final target of this problem is to identify the magnitudes and the types of those stresses so what was the first step separating the given framework into regions for that you need to complete your outer region like this enclose the diagram like this then we can clearly identify three regions on this figure let me start from one this is region one this is region two between these two forces and we have another region between Q force and W so this is the third region after marking the outer regions come inside then here I label this as 4 and this as 5 then you have to select a joint with only two unknown forces the second step is select the joint with only two unknown forces so what are these forces let's start with joint A here there is a force moving upwards which is P the magnitude is unknown then here we have three rods joining at this point so the stresses on these rods are unknown so here we have altogether four unknown forces B joint here we have three unknown forces ah, I forgot even though this is the magnitude is unknown for P and Q their directions are known so I repeat the second step is to select a joint with only two unknown forces that means only unknown direction magnitude is not important if we know the direction of the force it is considered as a known force So here we have four forces all together, three are unknown. 
So let's consider point B. Here we have three forces. Direction of Q is known. So these two are unknown. Point C, we have three rods joined together. All these three stresses are still unknown. Therefore, this point is having three unknown forces. Point D, we have two rods and one external force, W. Its direction is given. So here, these two stresses are unknown. So we can continue or start our stress diagram from either point B or D. Because B and D are the points having only two unknown forces. Then third point in framework, rotate clockwise or anticlockwise between regions identifying the forces on rods. So I have selected let's say point B as my starting joint. Then I have to rotate either clockwise or anticlockwise. So you have to decide what is the rotating sense. For this explanation I am going to rotate anticlockwise direction. So mark it in your answer script because in each and every joint in the stress diagram you have to follow the same rotating sense anticlockwise. Now I can start drawing the stress diagram. First I am going to move between two regions where the direction of the force is Known. that is force Q since I have selected anticlockwise rotating direction I want to move from this region to this region from 3 to 1 so when shifting from 3 to 1 you can see the force is directed downwards so it is a downward force when moving from 3 to 1 then that is represented in this manner 3 to 1 downwards indicated using an arrow it is Q then now we are in this region if I am going to rotate anticlockwise I want to enter into region 4 passing this rod that means passing th this stress it is horizontal because the rod is placed horizontal so from shifting 1 to 4 the force is horizontal 1 to 4 the force is horizontal but we don't know whether it is to left hand side or right hand side keeping that horizontal line the next shiftment is from 4 to 3 4 to 3 it is inclined to right hand side in this direction if I have marked my point 4 somewhere here can I reach region 3 or point 3 in this stress diagram moving in this direction? I repeat, if I have marked my point 4 here, can I reach point 3 moving to this direction? Because the direction of the third force is this. No. That means point 4 must be marked in left hand side so somewhere here I can mark point 4 now according to the direction of the third force this direction I can meet point 3 this is 90 degrees this 4 3 line which is BC rod is having an angle theta inclined to horizontal 
so in this triangle according to theta angle adjacent side and hypotenuse is known that means cos theta is equivalent to a over 2a a a get cancelled cos theta is half therefore theta angle it should be 60 degrees from that calculation I can mark this angle is 60 therefore this automatically becomes 30 as an example following the three steps in any framework problem I completed the stress diagram for point B which is the first point now let's read the problem given in this past paper and try to solve it in order the framework shown in the adjoining figure is made of five light rods AB, BC, AC, CD and AD freely jointed at their ends it is given that AB equal A BC equal to A AC equal CD AC rod equals to CD they are equal and CAD angle is 30 degrees if this is 30 since this is an isocell's triangle this angle is also 30 then this becomes 120 because the sum of interior angles of a triangle is 180 a load of weight W hangs at D this one and framework is in equilibrium in a vertical plane with AB horizontal and AC vertical supported by vertical forces P and Q acting respectively at A and B in the directions indicated in the figure find the value of Q in terms of W so first problem is to find Q so we have three unknown forces stress forces are internal forces no need to consider them still from these three forces I have to find the magnitude of Q since P is also unknown and the framework is in equilibrium I can take moments around point a Q is rotating the framework in anticlockwise direction therefore anticlockwise moment Q times separation is A is equivalent to clockwise moment created by W then the distance perpendicular distance from point A to this line of action of force W is to be calculated how to find that I can apply Pythagoras relation for this right angle triangle and obtain the length of AC AC is equivalent to 4A square minus A square square root which is root 3A these two are equal so this is root 3a I can resolve CD in this direction to find the perpendicular distance from A to this force which is similar to the distance from C along this dotted line to this line of action which is this angle is 30 because this part becomes 90 degrees this is vertical this is horizontal this is 90 when I subtract 90 from 120 this is 30 degrees root 3a cos 30 will give you this perpendicular distance root 3a cos 30 
cos 30 is root 3 by 2. I can cancel a a because a is not equal to 0. Then I have q as root 3 into root 3, 3, 3 w over 2. After finding that, they are asking to draw a stress diagram using Bose notation and hence find the stresses in the five rods and state whether these stresses are tensions or thrusts. So the three points which I gave you to follow in order to draw a stress diagram is known as Bose notation theory. Using Bose notation theory, we can continue to draw the stress diagram. So I have started it from point B, joint B. Now I have to select another joint where only two forces are unknown. Before that, from this part, I have to mark the directions of the stresses on AB and BC because I have already marked them here. 1 to 4 is the two regions around AB rod. So, from moving 1 to 4, the direction of the force is this manner. That means to left hand side. So, the stress on this rod is marked in this direction because the point I used to rotate anti-clockwise is B. So I have to indicate the direction to right hand side to left hand side along a B rod closer to B because B is the rotated point. At A it should be the opposite direction because these two are action reaction pairs. Then moving from 4 to 3, what is the direction? 4 to 3 upwards. 4 to 3 upwards. At B, you have to indicate the arrow to up. At C, opposite, down. Now we have to identify these two stressed forces as tensions and thrusts. For that also you need to pick the joint. If the arrow is pushing the joint, pushing point B, this is considered as a thrust. If it is pulling the joint away, it is a tension. So this is a thrust because it is pushing the point. This is a tension because it is pulling the joint. Now I am going to select my second point of rotation. For that I can select either C, A or D. But D, when we select point D, region 2, 3 and 5 are there but we know only region 3. So we have 2 new regions. So it's better to select either A or C because we have only two unknown forces and also we have more known regions in the stress diagram. I select point A. My rotating direction is anti-clockwise. Starting from a known region 4 and 1, both regions are marked, already marked. So when moving from 4 to 1, the direction is right hand side. As I marked from the previous triangle. So it is correct. 4 to 1, it is moving to right. Then 1 to 2, the direction of the force is vertically upwards. 1 to 2. So 2 point must be along this line 
but we need to know whether 2 is above 3 or below 3. For that I have to compare the magnitudes of Q and P. Q is already known which is 3W over 2. Then how to find P? For that I can use equilibrium upward forces equals downward forces then P is equivalent to the sum of Q and W Q is 3W over 2 plus W which is 5W over 2 therefore P is 5W over 2 P indicates 1 to 2 movement so 1 to 2 is 5w over 2 which is clearly more than this value so region 2 or point 2 must be above 3 somewhere here so this is 2 then what is this magnitude this magnitude entire length is 5w over 2 this is 3w over 2 so subtract this quantity from this total then you get this as W. Then 2 to 5. This is the inclination. 2 to 5. 30 degrees inclined from vertical. So it can be either upwards or downwards. Then we have to consider whether it is parallel to this line. So we need to consider everything. The angle between this line with vertical is 30. So this is the vertical. This is also inclined 30 degrees to vertical. So the line which I am going to draw now is also 30 degrees inclined to vertical. That means both these lines must be parallel. So I will mark a short line like this because we don't know point 5 is upwards or downwards. Then 5 to 4 it is vertical. 5 to 4 is vertical. So if I mark 5 here can I reach my point 4 in this stress diagram by moving downwards? No. It is somewhere here. So I have to move. I have to move downwards to place my point 5. So it is vertically above point 4. So you have to consider those kind of things when completing the stress diagram. So this is point 5 which is 30 degrees inclined to vertical this is vertical the angle should be 90 this is also 30 these two lines are parallel to each other then what is this magnitude these two are allied sum is 180 this should be 150 these two are also parallel both of them are vertical then this is a parallelogram then opposite sides must be equal this is also W now I have to indicate the new stress forces 2 to 5 what is the direction 2 to 5 is downwards from 2 to 5 we have to move down then I am rotating around point A 2 to 5 should be down so near point A I have to indicate a downward arrow then its opposite reaction is upwards at this end then 5 to 4 is downwards 5 to 4 is downwards then this should be down then here its reaction should be upwards now I have found three stress forces 
four stress forces this is the only one I need to find then I can select either C or D I am going to do with point D starting from known points 5 and 2 Same. rotating direction is anti-clockwise 5 to 2 is upwards because now I am going to rotate around D 5 to 2 is upwards then 2 to what is this region same region over here same region which is 3 then 2 to 3 should be down because this is downward W weight 2 to 3 is down magnitude is W correct then 3 to 5 so here we have 3 3 to 5 both are marked already marked now I can join them then 3 to 5 I had to move down 5 to 2 2 to 3 downwards 3 to here we are in 3 3 to 5 is downwards so near D I have to indicate downward arrow reaction is upwards now I have to mark all the important angles so, total angle here is 150 then how to find this angle this is 90 degrees this small angle is 30 then this total angle should be 60 if this is 30 this is also 30 that means this line which is the force indicated from 3 5 3 5 this line is 60 degrees inclined to vertical so 3 to 5 this inclination is 60 degrees to vertical if this part is 30 this should be 30 then from this triangle from this triangle this external angle or exterior angle is equivalent to the sum of these two interior opposite angles sum is 60 this is 30 then this should be 30 and this is 120 now I have completely drawn the stress diagram now there is only a small simplification in order to find the magnitudes of these unknown lengths so I want to find the magnitudes of these tensions and thrust then I have to complete a table like this it includes these four columns rod numbers tension and thrust we have to mark all the five rods and the two regions either side of each and every rod for example if I take AD AD is this rod the two regions either side are 2 and 5 2 and 5 so 2 5 length represent the magnitude of the tension or thrust of that particular rod then what are the lengths where we can find the magnitude easily here we have 1 to 4 1 and 4 still unknown 4 5 this is known 4 5 magnitude is W 4 5 indicates AC rod AC here AC is having what kind of a stress pushing the joint pushing the joint so it should be a thrust magnitude of this thrust on AC rod is W under thrust column I have to mark W then 2 to 5 2 5 unknown 3 to 4 still unknown 3 to 5 so we know only 4 5 magnitude 
now I'm going to find this length because we have 3 4 I can resolve 3 4 line in this direction which is equivalent to this line 3 W over 2 so this is a small rough work calculation resolve 3 4 3 4 is BC sine 60 away from the angle is equivalent to Q which is 3 W over 2 sine 60 is root 3 over 2 can cancel them then I have BC as root 3 W so BC here BC is having a tension it is pulling the joints away so it is a tension along BC magnitude root 3 W then 1 to 4 I can resolve 3 4 which is BC downwards so BC cos 60 will give you 1 to 4 what is 1 to 4 AB root 3 W over 2 is your AB AB 1 to 4 is indicating a thrust magnitude root 3 over 2 W then what is this AD AD here 2 5 2 to 5 which is equal in length to 3 4 so 3 4 was root 3 W 2 5 is same magnitude root 3 W but AD indicates a thrust should be written here root 3 W this is a thrust at last we have CD indicated from 3 5 numbers 3 to 5 I need to find this length for that I can see these two angles are similar equal angles then this triangle is isosceles then these two lines are equal if this is W this is also W this is isosceles triangle so 3 to 5 is W CD indicates a tension so I have to write W here in framework problem you will be given marks for these values for the stress diagram you will be given marks for the table you will be given marks in the meantime you have to calculate these kind of things since they have asked this in the problem you will be given marks for this as well these are rough work that concludes my discussion of 2018 framework problem join with my channel for more videos thank you